Good morning, everybody. Hope that you're doing so well. I miss you guys. I uh, just wanted to check, touch base um, with you. I assigned chapters one and two into Kill a Mockingbird, and typically when we're in class together, I would sit and we would talk about different things uh, about the book and the characters and the setting and just kind of introducing this whole book. And so I can't be with you in person to do that, but I can do it via video to see if you have any questions. So um, just wanted to touch base with you all and make sure that um, that you're doing okay with it, that you're understanding uh, a little bit about To Kill a Mockingbird. Again, Miss Mack is going to be teaching this mainly um, starting next week, but I just wanted to give my little introduction, especially because this book um, is so unique in the sense of it really does have a dialect. And so if you don't understand the Southern dialect and the things that they're saying, it really makes um, comprehension an issue. So I want to make sure that you're understanding and comprehending what you're reading. Um, that you are tracking that way. So just to kind of set up this book, um, the setting of this book is in probably the 1940s um, ish, around 40s, 40s, 50s, um, in the South. So uh, everything is segregated still. Um, you know, it's equal but separate kind of thing. Um, so there's a huge thing there, and it's poor. So this is after the Great Depression, so people are still on the rise, coming back up, um, trying to get through you know, the Great Depression and everything like that. So uh, a lot of poor people, especially in this part Who's sorry. of Alabama, um, they're just not as, as wealthy at all. Uh, and you'll see that a little bit. So you'll see there's different types of people. There's like the Finches who have a little more money. Um, and there's the Cunninghams who are poor, um, but are still, you know, kind and polite. And then you'll see more in Chapter 3 about um, the different types of people depending on how poor they are. So um, chapters one and two are pretty good as far as um, the dialect going. It's not as terrible. Um, but once you get into chapter three, you're going to see a lot more of the way that it's written. I'm so sorry. I keep yawning. Um, but there are just some things I want to go over today as far as just different words and what things mean so you understand what's happening. Um, also, To Kill a Mockingbird is a frame story. And by that, I don't mean that you... Um, frame that someone's framed for murder or that like they're framing you to get caught with this a frame story literally means it's a story within a story so part one it focuses on jim and scout and dill trying to get into the boo radley house and figuring out who boo radley is and um we aren't quite there yet but you'll get there um and so then if something else happens so it kind of like goes to that part for a little bit but then it all circles back around so it's a story within a story which is a really neat um you know, it's a really, it makes it for a unique story and it really helps you figure out, like, it just adds some depth to the book, which is fun too. Um, also, uh, like I said, this is a small backwood town where a lot of, you know, crazy things happen. Um, it's like just a, a typical small town in America. Um, but I wanted to go over with you also how it's written um, dialect wise. So I'm going to read some phrases to you and some words that, um, I'm going to have you learn and, and just to kind of understand the timing of it all and just the setting. So Miss Mac and I are working on that again. Sorry that I keep yawning. Mercy goodness. Um, so forgive me drinking coffee so I can stay awake. Anyway, also, Jim um, is like telling the story. So sometimes you're going to, like when she's narrating it, it's the older scout. Um, so it's definitely not... Um, it's not, you know, child scout. It's a grown-up scout who's talking about things. Um, so that's important to remember. So a lot of times you're like, a typical, you know, six-year-old wouldn't use the word uh, assuage or something like that. So know that it goes back and forth a little bit, which can be a little bit confusing. But scout is telling the story, sometimes through her kid perspective, sometimes through her adult perspective. So just don't get confused that way. Um, she really is just telling her story. Um, so make sure you keep that and, rem and rem you know, remind yourself of that, too, that she's, like, telling her story, but then put yourself in the story. Um, but there's just a couple things that I want to make sure you know. Um, so when people use the phrase, um, I reckon, if you could read that, uh, that means, um, well, I guess I will, or I guess that's okay, or, you know, I reckon it's all right. Um, are you going here? Yeah, I reckon. You know, it's like, yeah, maybe. Um, they say that a lot through here, and that's just some of those cute little things that 
I'm going to pay attention to. So in where um, you really start seeing this a lot more, uh, a little bit with Dill, uh, notice too, something that you'll notice a lot in this kind of dialect is um, you cut off. The, so if I said running, uh, he was running over there. Um, what they say is, well, he was running over there. You know, they take out the G and add a little apostrophe, uh, which makes it running. Um, or if you need, you know, where are you fixing to go? Means, where are you trying to go? Like, where are you going to go? Things like that. Um, and then, you know, whenever Jim uh, is talking to Dill, and um, and he says, you're scared, Dill said the first day. And then Jim replies, I ain't scared, just respectful. Um, you're too scared even to put your big toe in the front yard, Jim said. He reckoned he wasn't. He'd pass out of the place every school day of his life. Always running. You know, so you'll notice that, like, ain't, they use a lot, just like it's completely correct. Um, you know, making sure that they have those slight things. Uh, you'll notice in the next chapter, in chapter three, they keep referring to um, lunch as dinner. Um, so in the South, dinner is lunch and supper is actually our dinner. So if they're saying, oh, yeah, I can over for dinner, they mean lunch. Um and notice, too, when we get to, um, let's see, um, you know, she asked everyone to get out their lunch um, in molasses buckets and peered out of nowhere, they said. Um, and she stopped at Walter Cunningham's desk, where's yours? And he didn't say anything. And she's like, did you forget it this morning? He said, yep. You know, so that's him saying yes, but it's a very country. So you notice the difference between, like, super country people talking and even, like, Scout or Jim or any of them. Um, and she offers him a quarter. And notice that this is a huge thing in the South, too, that they're not going to pay. If you can't pay someone back, they aren't going to take your money. Um, they'll pay you back some other way, like we talked about, uh, he talked about in Chapter 2. But know that, like, it's kind of a way of life. If you can't repay them back, you're not going to take a gift. Um, and even the way that, you know, everyone talks. Um, you know, um, it says, you know, Walter's from the Cunningham, says Carolyn. I beg your pardon. That's okay, ma'am. You'll get to know all the country folks after a while. The Cunninghams never took anything they can't pay back. No church baskets and no script scraps. They never took anything off of anybody. They get along on what they have. They don't have much, but they get along on it. Um, and so they talk about that a little bit, but you're going to, you're going to see more of that dialect coming up. So if you have questions on that, don't be, don't hesitate to talk to Miss Macker and myself, uh, about what they're trying to say. Uh, comprehension is key here, clearly with anything, especially when you're taking quizzes for me and for Miss Mac. So uh, I definitely just wanted to make sure that you felt good about what you're reading. Uh, I know I think she's going to assign chapters three and four, um, but just know that this is a fun book. Um, if you want to read the dialogue out loud, like I'm talking to you, you can do that, not because it's me, but because I have an accent. So just think about the most Southern backward way that you would talk, and that's how you would read this book, because that's kind of what it is. So, um, again, any questions, let me know. Uh, Miss Mac has a lot in store for you guys. Um, clearly, you know, as we move forward, um, just make sure that you are asking questions, that you're talking to me, talking to her, to each other. I can't wait to read your discussion boards um, tomorrow or today when you turn them in. So, um, anyway, miss you. Hope you're doing well. Feel free to reply back with videos. I would love to see your faces and just hear how you're doing and I know it's hard sometimes to write, but it's quick to send a, easy and quick to send a video. So anyway, uh, let me know if you have questions. Talk to you soon, guys. Thanks.